Hey guys, welcome to Matt Stuff. This week I am celebrating passing 100 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, I'm also making some chopping boards, and they look a bit like this. If you want to see how I made those, stick around. Uh, I'm also doing a bit of a giveaway at the end to celebrate the fact I've passed uh, 100 subscribers. Um, so I'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, while this intro's on, uh, Drop a like on the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So before we get into today's build, um, I thought I'd just uh, give you a bit of a channel update, uh, that sort of thing, given it is my 100th uh, subscriber episode. Uh, I actually think at the time I'm filming um, this video I'm actually at 130, so thanks everyone for all your support, um, it's been really great. Um, I started this back in October last year just for a hobby, uh, being in lockdown, not having anything to do, uh, why not start a YouTube channel, uh, keep myself busy. Uh, no expectations of what I would achieve, um, but passing 100 subscribers, great stuff, really enjoying myself. Um, so what does it mean for me as a YouTuber at 100 subscribers? Uh, well, two things. One, I now owe uh, my friend Colin a pint because he bet me that I would uh, make 100 subscribers uh, by May, and I said I wouldn't do it until July. So that's one thing that happened to me at 100 subscribers. The other thing that happened at 100 subscribers is I get to change my URL. So that means instead of youtube.com slash random numbers and letters, which I currently have, I get to change it. So uh, what I wanted was slash Matt Does Stuff. But that has been taken by somebody else uh, who hasn't uploaded a video since 2014, uh, has got no content on their channel, but has my URL. And in no way am I bitter about that. So I can't have Matt Does Stuff, uh, so it has to be Matt Does Stuff something. So I did a bit of bit of thinking, uh, I thought about pluralising it, Matt Does Stuffs, doesn't make sense. Matt Does Stuffing, uh, that could be a good one, but sounds like I'm a niche channel for just making stuffing, and I didn't want to um, take that URL away from any future Matts who might want to do a channel dedicated to stuffing. Um, I also thought about going for Matt Does Stuff, ooh, cheeky wink, but... Uh, quite difficult to spell that, uh, that sort of gesture, I guess. Oh, yeah, don't know how to spell that. But in the end, uh, after all the nonsense ones, uh, I just decided to go for youtube.com slash Matt Stuff 2020, because that was when I started this channel. So like I say, thanks to everyone for subscribing, thanks for all your support, I really enjoy it, uh, I enjoy the comments uh, that people have put, and I enjoy seeing uh, the likes uh, on my videos. But enough about uh, all that, let's get on with today's build. I can't do that here, in this stupidly small hat. Uh, so let's turn around, get amongst it, at the workbench. And remember, stick around for the end and we'll do a giveaway. So, materials I'm using today, all hardwood. Uh, these came out of a craft hobby pack off of eBay. Uh, there were various uh, thicknesses, types of wood in there, uh, so what I did, uh, because I don't have a thicknesser or a jointer, um, what I want to do is make sure that uh, all the pieces I'm going to be using are sort of pretty much the same thickness. Uh, so what I did is went through, sorted them all out into what, what were nearly the same thicknesses, and then once I've done that, just sorted through and looked at the types of wood to see what went well together and see what I could make uh, some chopping boards out of. So um, what I've got is I've got pieces of sapili and some oak. So that's going to make one chopping board. Um, I've got a thicker bit of sapili. Uh, which has got some really nice grain on it and then I've got this piece which I don't know what it is could be a roco um, probably not though um, I don't really know but uh, again looks pretty nice um, and is the same size as this peely so that's where that's going together and then for the third board I've got some um, cherry uh, 
I think this is either ash or beech and a bit of walnut. Um, so those are the those are sort of going to make the, the three um, chopping boards. I'm going to do a slightly different pattern on each one uh, just because it makes it more interesting for me and for you. Uh, so yeah, first thing we need to do is pop over the table saw, chop them all to size. I actually didn't start at the uh, table saw, I started at the chop saw because I needed to get everything to about the same length um, before I uh, started. But once I'd done that, um, I went over to the table saw. Um, so most of the pieces that I bought in the hardwood hobby pack had uh, two uh, square faces, they'd already been planed, uh, which meant I could just run them alongside of my uh, fence uh, to square up the other edge. Uh, and then uh, that allowed me then to um, start uh, cutting the strips that I need. Um, with the uh, thinner bits, you can see here I'm just measuring um, the, uh, I think this is the beach, um, just running that through the table saw to get a, uh, a couple of thin uh, slices out of that. Uh, and I'm just using that, that piece then to uh, make sure the, the second one is the, the same size. So once all the pieces were uh, cut to size, um, I took them over to the workbench uh, and started uh, working out which way I wanted all the grain to go uh, and which way looked best. Um, they are all the same thickness but the workbench is uneven which makes them look a bit odd. Um, and once I decided I uh, then started the glue up. I'm using Type On 3 um, for the glue because that is uh, both waterproof and I believe uh, food safe. Um, I'm just using uh, the parallel clamps here to um, squeeze them up initially and then I'm adding more clamps as I've uh, squeezed them and then I'm putting some um, bits on the sides just in order to keep the uh, chopping board flat while it glues up. That one was glued up, I went on to the other one, uh, same process really, chopped it to length. The only difference here is I'm using my uh, jointing jig because the um, piece of uh, the first piece of hardwood um, hadn't been um, jointed or planed on either side so um, just use my uh, jointing jig here which runs through the mitre blade to give me one straight edge um, and then that allows me to run it against my fence uh, to um, sort out the, uh, the other side. Once I'd uh, done that, I could set the, I wanted squares, so um, I set the table saw to the thickness of the piece of uh, wood and uh, ran them through. Um, with these ones, I noticed they were a little bit rougher. Um, on the first one, I didn't really check it um, as much as I should have done, but I gave them all a bit of a sand. Um, this actually helped quite a lot in the final um, glue up. Um, I can see the glue lines in the in the other one, but on this one um, it's much better. Uh, so again, just checking uh, which which way I wanted the grain, how I wanted it to look, and then uh, glued it up in the same way as previous. So I'd left the, cl uh, the clamps on uh, overnight to make sure that the glue had a chance to set uh, really solid um, and that there would be uh, no issues. Um, so once I got the uh, both chopping boards out of the clamps, uh, the first thing I did was put the third one that I made um, back in the clamps and glued it up in the same way as uh, all of the, the, the other two um, and I got those uh, that one drying uh, while I sorted out the others. So 
the first thing I did was take an old chisel just to uh, chisel away all the old, all the sort of dried hard glue that had um, not been able to wipe off under the clamps. Uh, once I'd done that, I got to sanding, and there was a lot of sanding to do. Um, you'll see me messing with my respirator uh, in a minute. That's because I forgot to put it on to start with, but got it on um, after uh, about 10 minutes of sanding. Um, but started at 60 grit, worked my way up to 60, 80, 120, 240, um, and then uh, was intermittently checking the uh, um, flatness of the board with a ruler as I went. Uh, but yeah, a lot of sanding. Here I'm just showing you some of the uh, glue ups on one of the boards. You can see right at the end there, there was a couple of um, areas that didn't have um, a very good uh, lamination. Um, but mostly I was pretty happy with it um, but on those bits where I wasn't that happy I just mixed up some wood glue with a bit of the uh, dust that had come from the copious amounts of sanding and just uh, filled in those gaps. And after I'd done that um, I gave them another sand uh, at 240 uh, and uh, then set about trimming them up. Uh, I don't actually have any footage of me trimming them up. Uh, this is just me losing my pencil when I was marking it. Um, but you can see me trim up the third one when I take that out, the clamps in a bit. And then to finish off the edges, I'm just using my router table with a um, six mil uh, round over bit just to put um, a nice edge on it. And again, one last sand uh, to make sure that the uh, it was looking good. And then um, I popped a bit of water on the uh, both chopping boards because um, what this does is raise the grain, um, and I believe the process is called denibbing. Uh, so all the grain sort of sticks up, and then means that um, I can then go back over it with uh, 240 uh, grit sandpaper just to take all those uh, bits off to get it extra smooth. Um, and I think both, uh, both chopping boards at this point were looking really good. What I have to do was do the same all over again on the third one. The only difference here is I'm using a hand plane just to get rid of um, a slight bow and the bit of sapili in the middle. Um, and once I've done that, just more sanding. Uh, here's some actual footage of me uh, using my crosscut sled to trim it to size. And the final bit that I did, uh, which is the fun bit, is to use some uh, oil. Uh, so this is just some chopping board oil I got off Amazon. Um, don't really know about buying mineral oil, but it said it had lemon and lime extracts, uh, and I like lemon and lime as a combination. Um, so I wiped that on with a uh, with a cloth. Um, I put quite a lot on, let that soak in uh, into both boards, and then just let those uh, yeah let them soak it in, uh, and then I wiped them off uh, with a with a cloth um, once I thought they'd had enough, and I'll put about four coats on those. Um, over the next couple of weeks. So that is the first three chopping boards I have ever made. Um, not having a thicknesser or a drum sander makes the whole process a little bit more difficult, uh, but as you can see, I've achieved some, what I think is pretty good results. Um, some things that I, I learnt, uh, I bought 
some that hobby pack uh, came with two faces um, already already flattened or planed, um, which meant I could just use my table saw to get the sizes that I want, uh, which meant I had parallel edges. Uh, one thing I should have done, um, which I didn't, I didn't think about it until after the fact. My table saw. Uh, has still got the original blade in it, uh, which is just a rip blade. I should have got something uh, with a bit finer teeth for a bit of a better cut, and then I might have got a better finish. Or um, what I should have done was spent a bit more time maybe sanding uh, each of the gluing faces, try and get a bit um, a bit of a better mate on, on those. Um, and when I'm gluing up, uh, don't over tighten. Um, is one thing I've learned because on one of them um, where I've tightened it so where I tightened it quite a lot uh, the sort of board ended up bowing a little bit uh, which meant I had to do much more sanding uh, or sort of planing um, afterwards uh, which is a bit of a pain um, but like I say very achievable just make sure you've got uh, sanding uh, lots of sanding pads uh, and a respirator because you're going to be sanding for quite a while Right, competition time, or giveaway time. Um, my original intention for the giveaway was to give away one of the three chopping boards that I made, um, but after I'd made them, put the oil on, uh, I couldn't decide which one, so I decided to keep them all. Um, but because I still want to do a giveaway, what I did was knock up a fourth one, which is slightly smaller, out of some offcuts, and this is some cherry wood, some oak, some ash and some more oaks and more cherry wood. Um, so it's slightly smaller, about um, the size of one a small chopping board that you would buy in the shops. Um, so that's what I'm going to be giving away. Uh, in order to be in with a chance of winning that, or I say yeah, winning, yeah, uh, then what you need to do is be subscribed to my channel, uh, preferably publicly, uh, and you need to like this video and you need to drop a comment down uh, below this video telling me which of my videos you've liked the best and why. So that's all you need to do. Um, so I will announce the, uh, the way I'll pick the winner, sorry, is by um, using a random number generator online uh, and then I'll just count down the comments and whoever's comment is that number will win. Um, open to, the competition is open to anyone, I'll send it to UK and abroad. Um, and I think that's all I need to say. I'll write all the rules down below this uh, video anyway. Um, oh, and closing date is the 30th of April. Um, I will pick the winner then and then I will upload that uh, on the video upload from the 6th of May. That's when I'll announce the winner. Uh, so yeah, I think that about covers everything. Everything left for me to do is uh, Celebrate 100 subscribers with a beer, obviously. So today I've got a Salt Brewery Nelson Sauvin, which is a Vermont Session IPA. Uh, and that is proper party time. Oh. <laughs> and that is delicious. So remember, you stay safe, get some stuff done.